Hi and welcome back to the channel. In this video we're going to continue the series on working with the SpanCat model in Spacey. Now in the last video we worked on annotating a bunch of data in Prodigy. And right now we're starting right where I left off in that video. We have 35 annotations now done. In this video we're going to explore what to do with these annotations. Now in this video we're not going to be training a state-of-the-art model by any stretch of the imagination. Instead what we're going to be training is a model that is just good enough to help us annotate more quickly. Now to cultivate about 35 annotations, it probably took me about um, seven to eight minutes or so. I didn't actually time it. Um, but what we're gonna be doing in this video is training a model with these basic annotations so that we can annotate much more quickly. Now to do this, we're gonna do all of this in Prodigy, but if you're working with a, a framework outside of Prodigy, you can export the data and train with Spacey. And if you wanna see a video on that, I have a bunch of different videos on this channel that go through how to train a model using the spacey train function. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump on over to our terminal and we are going to just work with the data that we actually have. Now in the repository, I actually have all of the lines that you need to execute in the command prompt. And we're gonna go ahead and paste one of these in right now. Now let's take a look at this command. What we're looking at here are a few different things. First, we're calling up Python. And if you're on a Mac, you're probably gonna have to use Python 3 here. Next, we're calling the Prodigy library and we're specifically going to grab the train function. And the next thing that we want to specify is where we want to actually drop all of the models that we're going to be training so that they're not actually lost after we're done with our training process. And finally, we're going to specify what kind of model we want to train. In this case, we're training a span cat model or a span categorizer. And then finally, we are going to specify the data set that we want to use to train our model. And so if we execute this cell, and, and the uh, data set is the name of the data set that we used in the last video. If we go ahead and hit enter, we can load up the Prodigy train pipeline. You'll notice that we have everything now started. Now I'm gonna guide you through a couple of things that you're seeing here. You're seeing two different things being trained simultaneously, one being the toke to vec layer, and the other being the span cat a pipe and the pipeline. Both of these are going to train simultaneously. The main thing that is going to concern us right now, I'm not going to cover uh, precision recall and F-score, essentially understand that the score is uh, a, a combination of both the recall and precision, different ways that we measure accuracy in machine learning. If you want to learn about these, I have a whole video that talks about both of these metrics. What you want to see in this process is something sitting you know, reasonably well above 60%. Again, we're not going to use this model and distribute it out. Instead, we're just trying to get a model good enough to help us with the annotation process. And on a decent computer, you can expect this process to take anywhere from maybe five to 15, maybe even 20 minutes. Uh, the model that we're using is not storing vectors locally, meaning it's going to be quite small and very, very quick. It also allows us to train the model pretty quickly because we're not leveraging something like the, the vectors from the large model. So what I'm going to do is pause the video right now and jump back after this is done and we'll see how to actually use this model to start helping us with annotating things more quickly. Okay, now that we're back, we see that our model has actually finished and you can look at all the data here, such as the different epochs that have uh, that has gone over with all of the training data. Again, we can see that we're only working with uh, 34. We have 28 in our training and six in our evaluation. Certainly not a lot, but we'll see that this is not necessarily a bad thing when we're trying to get a small model up and running. And we can also see our various scores. You'll see it sitting around 88%. It's important to understand this does not mean that our model is going to be 88% accurate and we can just unleash it on a bunch of data and expect good results. It's 88% accurate with the data that we trained with, which was very, very minimal. When we use out of scope data, as we'll see in just a moment, you'll see that it doesn't generalize or make predictions on it very well. So what do we do? Well, what we want to do is we want to use this model to then start annotating stuff more quickly in Prodigy. How can we do that? Well, I'm gonna force an error here because this is a common mistake. I can go ahead and load up the exact same command that I did before we use Prodigy spans.manual, load up all of our data, and we can change the model here, where we can say models, which is where I've stored the models, and model-best. Now when Prodigy does the training, 
As does Spacey, it saves two different versions of the model, the last model trained, so the very last step, in the very last epoch, and then the best model trained throughout the whole training process. It's important to understand these because they are stored in two different folders. Now we can hit enter, and again, this is not the right thing to do, and I'll show you why, but it's important to know about. And we have one mistake here. I've got to just change this. I believe I have dropped this in the data subfolder. And we will load up Prodigy once again. Now, what we should be seeing now is the, the model annotating things, but notice if we keep on going through, we're not seeing anything annotated. This does not mean that our model is not trained well. It, it doesn't mean anything. What we've done here is we've used the wrong recipe. So let's go ahead and cancel this command, and we're going to change one main thing here. We are going to change this spans.manual recipe, and we're going to change it to spans.correct. Now, spans.manual and spans.correct are two different recipes. Manual uh, loads a model for tokenization. Uh, spans.correct loads up a model that does annotation as well as tokenization. And so when we run spans.correct, we are going to be able to access a model in real time, and it's going to help us annotate. So I'm going to reload our Prodigy server, and we'll notice that we actually have annotations occurring. Now, what we can see here is it's done a fairly decent job. It's got one false positive because it's flagged two different things as reference. In one instance, it's grabbed the parentheses. I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see this a bit better. Uh, we've got one parenthesis here. I don't like that, but I can make this very minor correction and everything is now correct. I can accept that. Now, if we scroll down, we'll see another annotation. And this is a little hard to read, so when I would zoom out once, we'll notice that it's done this correctly. Now, it's doing really well here. And that's because, if you remember from the training data, we have a lot of these RH citations. So we can expect those to be very in scope and perform very well. If we scroll down, we'll see something completely out of scope. I don't think I had BBC in any of these. Nevertheless, it's been able to figure out what a reference looks like and what a volume looks like. Now, it's important to understand, the February 25th, 1977, there was no volume in the training data that included that specific date. Nevertheless, the model, even though it's quite small, and even though it only had 34 examples, it's learned the features of what a volume is, which looks kind of like a date. So we can make some mod uh, modest corrections here. We can add in a citation, which is going to be this entire thing, because again, the citation is all the different references that are within a, a single uh, parentheses, and we can add in the publication. So with these two minor corrections, we now have a very good result, and we're able to see that this next step, again, not working with really in scope data, it's making decent corrections. So what does this step allow us to do? This step allows us to get a basic model up and running very quickly, about eight minutes or so, and start using it to annotate much more quickly. I don't have to go through and manually highlight each of these anymore. Instead, I can use this baseline model to speed up the annotation process. And this is very good practice if you're trying to annotate both accurately and quickly. It's a very efficient way to leverage the Prodigy uh, system if you're going to do some of these pr uh, earlier training processes as you go through and annotate. It's important to understand, as you get through every maybe 100 or so annotations, go back, retrain a model, it'll be better, retrain it with all of the data that you've been working on, it'll be better than the prior one, or at least it should be, and you can start annotating even more quickly. And you'll find as you do this process iteratively over the course of maybe several hundred or even several thousand uh, uh, annotations, you'll find that you do less and less corrections and more and more hitting accept, which allows for you to cultivate a gold training set much more quickly and effectively. That's going to be all for this video. We're going to, in the next video, talk about how we actually train a production-ready model, meaning one that is going to be trained on several hundred examples, and we're going to talk about how to set up the config system and do a, a training process where we store vectors with a model, meaning a model that can leverage pre-trained vectors to actually make better predictions. And this would be the model that you would then distribute out to other users or use in production in some way or start really structuring more formal tests with. That's gonna be all this video. Thank you for listening. As always, thank you so much to everyone who is a Patreon supporter on this channel. If you get a lot out of this channel, please do consider supporting it via Patreon, which is linked in the description down below.